Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles, but we're gonna give you a daily dose of dismal Disney and also some speculation as to what might be going on here. Disney dropped to $102 yesterday. I think they started at around $102 this morning. Uh, it's another massive decline for Disney. They've been dropping ever since their last earnings report. And I think it has something to do with the advertising. I think it has something to do with the upfronts, which were taking place. For those of you who don't know, the upfronts are kind of when all the streamers and television networks, uh, you know, pimp their wares to potential advertisers. And Disney went all out this year. They had Bob Iger there. And I don't think people were impressed. Actually, what was more impressive was Netflix. Netflix coming out and saying that they have like 40 million subscribers on their ad tier. And that might take ad dollars from Disney, regardless of them uh, bundling or whatever. But I think people are looking at Disney right now and they're like, yeah, they don't really have a plan. They don't really have much in the pipeline. In fact, Bob Iger's being non-committal about what they're gonna do with the theme parks. He's like, we're gonna spend more money in the theme parks, but we're not gonna say exactly where we're spending it yet. People want a plan. They wanna know this company has a plan and they got no plan. They got no plan. So let's uh, let's talk about this before you get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. Guys, no woohoos in this video. She's not here. Kiki's not here. She will be back, but she's out and about this morning. So let's uh, let's talk about Disney. So they dropped down to $102. Again, a decline of 2.45%. Even The Motley Fool, which is usually in their corner. Now they're up to 103 now, I guess. Even The Motley Fool, which is usually all about Disney, is saying that they're staying away from Disney stock even after selling it off because they're down 10% over the last 30 days. And mostly it's because people don't think there's a future. They they said Q3 is going to be really, really bad. And I think Disney is kind of maxed out, no pun intended, in streaming. They've hit the ceiling on the number of streaming subscribers they're going to have. And now they have to bundle with HBO Max, their adversary, former adversary, to try to take on Netflix. But surprise, Netflix is actually going to be bundled with uh, Apple TV and Peacock. So that's, you know what I'm saying? And Netflix by itself is bigger than like all the other streaming services combined. So I think that people are looking at this. They're like, this is a losing proposition. You guys, everybody has lost in the streaming wars. And what's going to happen is they're all going to go crawling back to Netflix or we're only going to have like two or three streamers. In my opinion, I think uh, Disney, Paramount, Warner Brothers, they all would have been better off just creating content for Netflix and calling it a day. And they wouldn't have the overhead. Netflix can worry about distribution uh, you guys can just, you know, create your movies and your TV shows and whatever. But anyway, this is coming from Smart Karma. The Walt Disney Company's stock price drops to $102.77. Again, it's it's up about a buck since this was written. A decline of 2.45%, time to buy or bail. Despite the slight drop, Diz stock uh, maintains a positive year-to-date growth of 13%. So there's that. But it's still like half of what it was at at its peak a couple of years ago. You know, um, so this is what I think is actually happening. I think it's about Netflix uh, value investing in the report. Disney Q1 earnings finally ready to take share from Netflix discusses the competitive landscape in the U.S. media sector. They suggest that Disney is poised to accelerate faster than Netflix based on the Q1 results. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. In fact, I th I think personally, this this is a big part of it. And this is just speculation on my part. The upfronts. Disney actually trotted out Bob Iger and uh, Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> you know? But the first time that Bob Iger has actually gone to one of these things in decades, that's how that's how desperate they are for advertising revenue for Disney Plus, for their channels. And that's why they, they're, they're uh, uh, teaming up, I think, with HBO Max to try to be able to sell people like this big bundle. Netflix... After, after Disney does their song and dance, Netflix announces that they hit 40 million monthly active users nearly on their ad tier, just their ad tier, nearly double its scale at start of 2024. People look at this like, oh yeah, Disney's going to overtake Netflix and it's going to be because of advertising. No, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Well, Disney's going to over Disney's going to combine with Hulu and HBO Max to overtake Netflix. No, Netflix is going to team up with Apple and Peacock at Comcast. So you've got the biggest cable provider and the biggest phone maker teaming up with Netflix. You, Disney ain't got a chance in hell. 
I mean, Disney, I think will be a number comfortably at number two with uh, Disney and Hulu plus, but they're never, they're never going to overtake Netflix. And I think before it's all said and done, a lot of these other wannabe streamers are wi- going to wind up just putting their content back on Netflix and, and calling it a day. So let's talk about this. This is what I think actually happened. Netflix's 18 month old advertising tier has nearly doubled in size since the start of 2024, reaching 40 million monthly active users around the world. And this is when the stock dropped when they announced this it was yesterday. So investors are like, well, they're not going <laughs> to they're not going to beat that. There's no way they're not going to beat it. The streaming giant revealed the number and it's uh, first person upfronts uh, presentation in New York or it's in person upfronts presentation in New York last year and a presentation conducted in a virtual format due to the strikes. The company said it had five million monthly active users. The number grew to 23 million by January. Again, these, these are the people on the ad supported tier. Netflix president of advertising, Amy uh, Reinhard, told the crowd that 40 percent of all signups now come from the ad plan in countries where it's available. Pricing plays a role. It's only $7 a month. It's basically just TV at this point. The plan is well below many other services and the company's own ad-free options. It also is cheaper for an account holder to sign up to a new ad support account rather than pay to share their password. Yes. So <laughs> I think, again, investors were, were kind of pinning everything on Disney's ability to max out its revenue potential with streaming and Netflix is like, oh yeah, we've like just completely blown past you in the advertising space too. After insisting for years they would never accept ads, citing privacy concerns, Netflix hastily announced the reversal on earnings call in 2022. Yeah, because everything's crumbling. Microsoft was enlisted as a partner and they got rid of Microsoft, I guess. Despite the bumpy start, advertising has come to be embraced by the company and many people on Wall Street as a key strategic initiative. As it has developed its its ad tier, Netflix has also stocked it with live programming. See, I didn't know that because I don't have that tier. I barely watch Netflix, honestly. Live programming from comedy to award shows to sports. Earlier on Wednesday, Netflix and the NFL. Okay. Earlier on Wednesday, Netflix and the NFL announced that the streaming giant would carry two Christmas Day games this season and at least one holiday contest in two seasons after that. You got you got sports. I think uh, wasn't WWE going to Netflix too? Yeah, if you've got live sports, it's it's you're done, man. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, ESPN or not, ESPN's not in a very good place right now. In addition to the stats, Reinhardt announced Netflix will launch an in-house ad tech platform. This will give advertisers new ways to buy, insights to leverage, and new ways to measure impacts. So this could be self-service advertising like like YouTube. So agencies can just buy ads on Netflix. Uh, So they're going to do everything in-house. Our audiences are highly engaged. I mean, they're choosing to spend their time watching Netflix. That's important because engagement is the key to success in streaming. Yeah, I think Netflix has already won. They, they, They won. And all these companies, these studios, blew themselves up trying to compete with Netflix. So it was like a one two punch. It was like, not only are we kicking your ass in advertising Disney, but uh, you're going to do a bundle. OK, cool. We're going to team up with Comcast and team up with Apple and we're going to kick your ass there, too. And then we're going to come around and kick your ass in the theme parks. And we're going to talk about that. This is, look, this is the, the long way of telling you why I personally think the stocks are down. People are like, ah, oh, it's over. You're like they're they got nothing. Q3 is going to be bad. They're not going to beat Netflix. And nobody knows what the hell is going on in the theme parks. And yeah, OK, Planet of the Apes. Oh, boy, Planet of the Apes. And maybe Deadpool and Wolverine will do good, but they really got nothing this year as far as movies are concerned either. So, yeah, it's not looking good. Uh, this is coming from Deadline a couple days ago. Iger returned to the upfront stage for the first time since 94. That's how important this was to them. With a pitchman praise for Disney's creative excellence and Jimmy Kimmel's roast. Oh, I'm sure he's going to go really easy on Bob. Um, today, we're going to share with you the incredible projects we're working on. And then later, Jimmy Kimmel will be out here to tear them all apart. He'll be tearing me apart, too. He'll be mild. So, yeah, they said coming off heavy praise and pixie dust filled introduction by Oscar winner Emma Stone back on the upfront stage for the first time in decades. Again, that's how important this is. Iger was quick to bask in the glory of Nielsen's media distribution report released this uh, morning that put the house mouse at number one for total TV viewing. Again, that is their streaming and their uh, TV channels, ABC and ESPN, all that. Um, with an upcoming bundle plan with Warner Brothers Discovery, an earnings report earlier this month that beat Wall Street expectations. 
a brief stock dip. And a sports streamer team up with Fox and Warner Brothers. They have to team up with other companies, guys. I mean, that's that's where they're at right now. Past and current CEO had some pep in his step Tuesday. Um, even more so in front of big time advertisers and their checkbooks. Uh, Disney has uh, Lisa Ann Walters called it in the Disney Empire roll call. Now, while the whole business model and the way people consume media are drastically different, what hasn't changed is what I was saying is the fact that success in this industry is really predicted or predicated on one thing. And that's telling great stories, Iger said in the full pitchman mode. And great storytelling is something Disney has always excelled at. We have an array of outstanding creative engines. And he talked about all the stuff coming up. Apparently, people didn't get excited because this is uh, coming from all ears. And they said that, yeah, he's got some pretty big bets on it um, at this Moffat Nathanson Media uh, Communications Upfront um, Summit, Media Communications Summit. Um, so here's what happened. He actually said that they told a lot of stories, but they're not all good. During the May 15th conference, he shared that as of late, he has been telling everybody good isn't enough. It has to be great. What exactly he meant by that? He didn't explain, but it could fall in line with Disney's efforts to streamline their content. Yeah. There's a lot of crap on Disney plus it costs a lot of money like Willow. Uh, he said, if you analyze carefully how we achieve returns on invested capital in a theme park. Uh, the theme park space was all about IP. And for years now, new attractions and lands in the parks were either based on very old IP or no IP. I don't like this. I don't like that they want to go all in on IP. Uh, so he's talking about the overseas parks, et cetera. But they actually said Disney's telling too many stories. When it comes to streaming and Disney Plus, he gave some insight into the hiccups the company is that what you're calling it? hiccups the company has had during its fledgling years, saying as we got into the streaming business in a very aggressive way, we tried to tell too many stories. And he's not really telling people what he's going to do in the park, but he does talk about Epic Universe. Again, this is Comcast. This is their rival. They're teaming up with Netflix. It's not looking good, guys. He did share that it was fine that Epic Universe would likely bring more visitors to Orlando and that while they're mindful of what Universal is up to, it's not something he's getting. they're getting distracted by. Iger again mentioned IP. We should just continue on the path we've been on and mind that great IP. They're bringing Mario and probably Pokemon to Universal. Do, do you really think anything Disney has put out in the last decade or anything they will put out in the next decade is going to compete with Nintendo? I don't think so. He's just playing it cool. And now your competitor that's opening this fantastic looking theme park is teaming up with all of your worst enemies. And, uh, you know, we've got it on uh, Apple, which I thought was in Disney's corner, but apparently not. Uh, they're, they're getting it from uh, uh, Comcast. And again, they've got the platform, Comcast, biggest cable provider, Apple, biggest phone provider. They're working with Netflix. They're going to eat Disney's lunch. Long story short, it was a very long story. This is why I think they took a nosedive yesterday. And I think that Disney is going to continue to drop uh, because they got nothing. You really don't like, yeah, uh, it's, it's all razzle dazzle. We got great stories. Uh, you know, we'll eventually get around to telling them, uh, we're going to do something in the theme park. Eventually it's all time. They're all trying to buy time right now. Disney's trying to buy time. I think cause they spent all of their time focused on trying to fend off Nelson Peltz and uh, try-in partners, and they spent a lot of money and a lot of resources on that, and they weren't thinking, well, what happens if we win? Because I don't think investors are gonna allow things to continue the way that they've been continuing. And I think a lot of people are over it. A lot of people are over it. I mean, it's Disney's a very easy habit to break when it's overpriced and the product is subpar compared to what it's been in previous years. You know, it's a very easy habit to break. And with a recession coming, or possibly a depression. Some people are talking Great Depression 2.0. God, I hope that is not the case. But if it is, do you really think people are going to drop five to ten thousand dollars on a Disney vacation? I don't think so. But they'll spend, you know, seven to fifteen bucks on a streaming bundle. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.